Hello. Uh, so I'm Katya, and as you heard, I'm an engineering student, and I'm also a woman. So what has it been like for me in this traditionally male-dominated environment? Well, to be honest, at my university, I have actually never felt questioned by anyone but myself. I've always felt like I've had a place, and at the same time, like it didn't really belong to me, especially during my first years. And what I realized was that, in my case, I can't really say that it's my university's fault. So we need to back up the tape a bit. Uh, Eight-year-old Katya, she was cocky, a bit naive, uh, but she thought mathematics was fun. She took computer science classes, and she just loved telling everybody what to do, uh, even if they didn't really want to hear it, and solving problems and organizing and that kind of stuff. So already then, I showed typical traits of an engineer. But that wasn't the way I was seen. Because, um, you know, I was a girl, I took natural science, and I had the highest grade in just about all of my classes. So what do you guys th think that people told me that I should become? Exactly. Because I'm a woman, I'm nurturing, I'm caring, so I should be a doctor, right? Or in some cases, when that option was turned down, teacher was suggested to me. And this, even though I hate the sight of blood, I'm not very fond of sick people, and in general, children do not like me. <laughs> so I had all these people around me, you know, like teachers and counselors that I trusted and really respected and respected their opinion of me. But no one ever told me, not once, that I should or even could become an engineer. And now you may wonder, how did I end up at Sweden's biggest technical university? Uh, well, when I sat there with the list of possible careers to pursue, engineering was there, but it was written far, far down on the list, and almost written in some sort of invisible ink. But eventually, all other options got crossed out. You know, no blood, no children. Um, which means that I actually chose engineering, not because it was the obvious choice for me, but because it was my only option left. And since I didn't believe in myself within this field, when I got accepted, I approached the whole thing with, you know, we'll see how long I last. Um, that was four and a half years ago. And now I'm six months away from becoming an engineer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, obviously, something happened along the way, and now I know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, much thanks to the support I've felt at my university. But don't give me, uh, get me wrong. We still have a lot of work to do here as well. I mean, we need to increase the number of female professors. It's crazy, but I had my first female lecture during my third year. And we need to even out the numbers between men and women in engineering, because we know that when facing the challenges of the future, it is best done with diverse teams. But the lack of female professors and the gender gap between students is only a symptom of the issue I raised earlier. If the option of becoming an engineer is not presented to young girls with great potential, then yeah, we will have many doctors and teachers, and that is great, but how will we ever even out the numbers within the technological field? I'd say that at technical universities, at least here in Sweden, we are beyond normalizing that women belong here. It is normal now. We do belong here. What we need to do now is to move outside our universities and normalize it in society. 
engineering as an occupation must be presented to all young people showing potential within this field, girls and boys. They don't need to pursue it, but they need to know that the option is available and that they can do it if they want to. If I could travel back in time to my 18-year-old self, I would strengthen her confidence by putting engineering at the top of her list. And I would fill in that invisible ink with a big, fat marker. And for all I know, there are thousands of young girls out there in the same position as I was. And if I could ask one thing of you guys today, is that if you ever meet them, make sure you carry that big fat marker with you so you could fill out their invisible ink. Because I believe that is how we will increase the number of female engineers in the future. Thank you.